Hi everyone, uh, and welcome to today's vlog uh, series. Today we're going to talk to you about public transport in the UK. So, uh, two aspects involved here. The first is going to be how to get from your airport to your accommodation or to the hospital you're staying in, so the transfers aspect. And then the other side is commuting, so day to day travel from wherever you're living to wherever you're going to be working. Okay, so when you first arrive in the UK, obviously you're going to want to have your travel pre-arranged before your flight lands. Um, one of the biggest uh, kind of things that we always say to our candidates, to our doctors, is make sure you know exactly where you're going and how you're going to get there. Please don't book your flights, land in the UK and then try and jump in a taxi. It could be a disaster for you and it could end up costing you a fortune. So be really, really well prepared for uh, your arrival in the UK. Um, the usual options uh, that are available to doctors when they arrive are going to be trains, uh, first and foremost. I think because the UK is quite a small, geographically small country, it's actually very, very easy to travel between cities. So if you're travelling into Gatwick or Heathrow, traditionally most do, uh, then you're able to come straight into central London and get trains pretty much all around the country from central London. Um, so train prices in the UK, not the cheapest, obviously you're going to have the consideration of how much luggage you've got um, to bring with you and if you come in with your family at the same time, it may be cheaper just to book a car uh, and go all together with all of your luggage and that kind of thing. Uh, which is of course the second option available to you, you might want to get a private hired taxi. Now there will be taxis at the airport, so you could theoretically just land and take a taxi to wherever you're going, but keep in mind that it's going to be a lot more expensive, particularly if you were to find a metered taxi, um, they're going to be far more expensive than pre-booking and having someone meet you uh, in the arrivals lounge with a board. Um, to obviously take you to your final destination. Um, so yeah, that's a, a really popular option actually and the one that for our candidates we usually arrange or, or recommend um, that people go with. Uh, others that are available to you, well, you might want to consider internal flights. Um, the vast majority of uh, international, certainly from further afield from outside of the EU, uh, flights come into Heathrow or Gatwick, um, which of course is great if you're going to be based in London, but if you're going to be going to the northeast of England or Scotland or even Manchester or Birmingham, you might want to consider booking an internal flight so that you can just hop on the next plane and obviously your luggage would then be waiting for you in the destination city. Um, also possible options of buses and coaches, they're pretty good in the UK actually, they're a lot cheaper, you do have somewhere to store your luggage. Um, have a look, see where's, uh, you know, how convenient they're going to be for you. Obviously they're only going to run to set times, there's not going to be as many of them as there may be trains and it might not be as convenient as a taxi that could take you door to door, um, but quite a cost effective option for you. Okay, so the second part that we're going to talk about today is the options for when it comes to commuting to work. Um, this is one of the kind of common misconceptions for international doctors, I think, as well, that um, often international hospitals are huge compounds, doctors are able to live there in their living quarters and work in the same place and they can walk to work and so on. Um, in the UK, the average commute time is about 45 minutes. Most things are based in major cities or towns, but actually people live in the surrounding areas, either in the suburbs of cities or in towns that are nearer to cities and so on. So the commuter kind of culture is a big thing in the UK and it's something you should prepare yourself for because it's very, very unlikely that you're going to be living right next door to the hospital that you work in. So expect a journey time, as I mentioned, 45 minutes is the average for the UK. Um, options available to you, uh, some people drive, but do keep in mind that driving in um, is going to incur quite a cost, obviously the cost of buying the car in the first place and insuring it and so on, but equally parking isn't that cheap at hospitals and also not that readily available sometimes, um, so you may find yourself incurring a bit of extra cost with that. Um, in terms of public transport, depending on where you are of course, there are usually commuter trains that take you from the either the suburbs or the smaller towns into big cities um, and also buses which are, are often really really well used by commuters in the UK. Um, they give you the option of uh, obviously picking up wherever you are and coming into 
the major hub of the town or city and then walking on to the hospital from there. But keep in mind that the hospitals often run bus services that stop off at the hospital so it might be a good option for you uh, to consider and certainly worth looking into. Um, the other aspect is that you know the UK is pretty safe and has uh, great uh, links in terms of cycle lanes, um, the paving and the walking systems here are great too so a lot of um, the centre of cities are actually really easy to kind of walk around the pedestrian zones and things like that so um, you might want to if you're a bit more of a, a health and fitness freak you might want to get on the bike um, or get walking or jogging into work um, so yeah they're your, your main options for commuting. Okay, thanks very much. Um, I guess in order to start your uh, booking your transfers or thinking about your commute to work, the first thing you need to do is get a job. So, uh, of course, if we can help you or assist you in any way with your job search or with any of the other aspects of relocating to the UK, please do get in touch. As always, we'll put the contact details up at the end of the video.